On theme, I'm here to introduce the recipient of the Community Impact Award, the Keith Haring Foundation. That was a favorite Keith Haring song, Love Sensation. It was in heavy rotation at Paradise Garage in 1982 when he started going there. <laughs> Many stars lined up in perfect attunement to lead to this moment. Three months before his death, Keith Haring set up the Keith Haring Foundation to support organizations providing educational opportunities to vulnerable youth and organizations engaged in AIDS and HIV infection research and care. No other art star of the 80s designed a legacy even remotely similar. Just as no other artist of his time was so engaged all at once in work for kids, queer people, and messaging on addiction, racism, homophobia, and saving the planet, his artivism. And when the foundation decided to sell works in their collection, not by Herring, but by his community of friends, they discussed a beneficiary, and of course, the right fit was the center, the original community center for us gays of the 80s. Sotheby's estimated the sale at $1.5 million, yet the final number was much higher. The gift of $3.7 million is the largest ever given by the foundation and the largest ever to be received by the center. <clears throat> The award this evening and naming of the Keith Haring Community Wing at the center are not only logical, but intimate and true for Keith, as the center was a destination in his own downtown life. His restroom mural that we already heard about once on the second floor was done in honor of the 20th anniversary of Stonewall and depicted a, by 1989, once upon a time, golden age of promiscuity. Taking silence equals death seriously, he wrote a fundraising letter for ACT UP, coming out as a PWA, a person with AIDS. He was a regular at Monday night meetings at the center and invited Peter Staley, who was then the chair of the fundraising committee, to stop by his studio where he would reach into a knapsack for wads of $100 bills, as much as $10,000 each time. Peter has said that over one-third of ACT UP's 1989 receipts can be attributed to Keith Haring. <clears throat> when Haring's friend Jean-Michel Basquiat died in 1988, he made a painting in homage, a pile of crowns for Jean-Michel Basquiat. On opening night of Herring's exhibition at Tony Schifrazi Gallery, the huge painting came off the wall and crashed with a loud thud on the floor. That's John michel Keith said to her friend. Tonight, with all the positive energy in this room and given the meaning mixed with the fun, helping to set up the center for its next 40 years of serving the community, and in the face of perhaps even fiercer attacks on LGBTQ rights, I think we can confidently say that's Keith. <clears throat> Thanks. To accept this award, please join me in welcoming Keith Haring's dear friend and now the Foundation's Executive Director, Gil Vasquez, and its Program Director, Fawn Krieger. How sweet it is to know you're being treated wrong. Getting what you want when you want it, baby. Yeah. Morning, noon, and night. You can't
Good evening, everyone. My name is Gil Vasquez, and I am the executive director of the Keith Haring Foundation. And this is Fawn Krieger, our program director. It is an honor to be here tonight to humbly accept this recognition by the LGBT Center of the legacy of Keith Haring and the foundation that he had the foresight to create so that his work could continue beyond his physical presence. I want to say that Keith's legacy is not just about his art, but about his passion for service to his fellow humans and his commitment to making the world a better place. On behalf of the Keith Haring Foundation, I'd like to express our deep gratitude and support for your work at the LGBT Center. Thank you for your stewardship of the Once Upon a Time mural that Keith painted in 1989. If anyone has not seen that mural, I highly advise a visit to the center. If you had any doubts whether there was any shame in Keith's game, <laughs> Once Upon a Time puts that to bed. He had none. Uh, we are really proud to stand with you and look forward to continuing this important work together. As many of you know, Keith was diagnosed with HIV in the 1980s at a time when the disease was still poorly understood and deeply stigmatized. But even as he faced his own mortality, Keith refused to be silenced or to let the disease define him. Instead, he used his art to raise awareness about HIV AIDS, to challenge societal norms, and to push for change. Keith believed that art could bring people together, break down barriers, and inspire hope even in the darkest of times. That is the legacy that we continue to honor and uphold through the work of the Keith Haring Foundation. <laughs> I'd like to share a full circle moment with you guys. Story time. I'd like to tell you about when a community of artists some who are still with us and others who have also passed, came together 30 years after Keith's passing to help lift the community of today. Keith used to trade works of art with his artist friends, Kenny Scharf, Andy Warhol, Jean-Michel Basquiat, Futura, Lady Pink, and on and on. By the time he passed away in 1990, he had accumulated a decent amount of works by these and other artists. Because there are strict rules governing estates and foundations, our legal counsel at the time advised that we must sell those works because they didn't serve a charitable purpose in the eyes of the law. For many reasons, it took us a long time to finally sell these works. When we decided the time was right, I asked the trustees on our board to commit to, donate, to donating the proceeds of the sale to one deserving organization, and they agreed. With the help of our program director, Fawn Krieger, we considered many organizations we had long-standing relationships with and decided that the center felt like the right recipient. And again, our board agreed. Yeah. 
And as Brad mentioned earlier, we, we were told by Sotheby's that conservatively, the works were estimated to bring in $1 million. We thought, wow, a $1 million gift to the center would be amazing. The sale happened on September 24th, 2020, in the middle of a raging pandemic. And we're having a staff meeting while the actual auction is happening. So we're watching it live as we're talking on Zoom and we see the numbers going up. One million, two million, three million. We are, we are gagging at this point. When it was all said and done, the sale achieved $3.7 million with every lot sold. It was a success that we could not have imagined when we started the endeavor. I call it a full circle moment because it took 30 years for that collection of works to reveal their purpose. And the proceeds could not have gone to a better organization. Give it up for the center, guys. <laughs> It is, it is one of our proudest moments uh, in our foundation's history and one of the best decisions we ever made. In closing, I'd like to congratulate the center for its 40 years of work in the community. As we look to the future, there is no doubt that there will be new challenges and obstacles to overcome. We're confident that together we can continue to make progress and create a more just, compassionate, and inclusive world for all people, regardless of their sexual orientation or gender identity. Thank you. I just want to make a quick thank you to Punctuate Gill. Um, we're so grateful for Glenda's inspiration and the center's board and its incredible vision. Um, and I also just want to say how immensely moved I am by the courage and compassion of the staff at the center. Um, it leaves me speechless. <laughs>